The Case of Vampire Vivian by Michelle Knutson, illustrated by Amy Warmer. There was a new girl in Molly's class, a weird new girl. She had a thing about bats. She had bat stickers all over her notebooks, and she wore a bat t-shirt. She even had bat earrings. It was creepy. The new girl had moved right in down the street from Molly. Her name was Vivian. Molly told her parents about Vivian after dinner. The other kids call her Vampire Vivian, she said. She's kind of scary. Molly's little sister dropped her dish towel. She's a vampire? she asked in a small voice. That's just what they call her, Molly said, because of the bats. Vampires aren't real, sweetie, her, their mother told Lisa. Lisa still looked scared. That night, Lisa jumped into Molly's bed. A bat had flown by her window. It's her, she gasped. It's Vampire Vivian. She's trying to get me. In some made-up stories, vampires change into bats. Scary myths like this are one reason many bats are many people are afraid of bats. Molly could barely see the bat flying away in the darkness. Don't be silly, she said. Vivian isn't really a vampire. Then where did the bat come from? Lisa demanded. That's a good question, said Molly. I've never seen a bat around here before. On the way to school, Molly told her friends, Louis and Frank, about the bat. You don't think Vivian really could be a vampire, do you? asked Louis. I guess we'll just have to find out, Molly said. When Molly got to class, she made a list. Then she looked it over. What I know about vampires. 1. Can't go out in daylight. 2. Sleep all day. 3. Drink blood. 4. Can turn into bats. 5. Hate garlic. Vivian had no trouble going out in daylight. She was sitting right there at her desk. She was wide awake, too. Molly showed her list to Frank and Louis. Molly showed her list to Louis and Frank. Vivian drinks milk, said Frank, and she had garlic mashed potatoes at lunch. But what about the bat, Molly saw? asked Louis. How else do you explain it? That evening, Molly waited. Sure enough, a bat flew by the window again. In fact, three bats flew by. What are they doing out there? Lisa whispered from under her blanket. Just swooping around, Molly said. Molly noticed more bats by the streetlight, but they weren't the only flying things. There was something else, something very small. Bugs, she realized. The bats were chasing bugs. How do bats see tiny insects in the dark? They use their ears. Bats send out high signals, high squeaks. The sound bounces off objects and sends echoes back to the beer, bat's ears. From these echoes, bats can tell where something is, how big it is, and which way it's moving. Why would vampires chase bugs? asked Frank. When Molly told him what she'd seen, maybe they're not very smart vampires, said Louis. Maybe they're just regular bats, Molly said. But why did they show up right after Vivian moved in? asked Frank. I wish I knew, said Molly. We'd better find out more about bats. After school, they went to Frank's house to search the internet. There were lots of bat sites. I guess Vivian's not the only person who has a thing about bats, Frank said. If you want to find out more about bats, visit www.batcon.org or www.batroost.com. Molly wrote down all the interesting facts they found. Frank pointed Frank printed out pictures. Lewis kept everyone supplied with cookies and milk. Number 1. 
There are more than a thousand kinds of bats. Number two, bats live all over the world. Number three, bats are the only flying mammal. Number four, bats are not blind. Number five, biggest bat is the giant flying fox. Its wingspan is six feet. Number six, smallest bat is bumblebee bat of Thailand. Its wingspan is six inches. Number seven, bats sleep in the daytime and wake up at night. Molly watched the sky as she walked home. It was, wasn't dark enough for the bats to be out. The weird thing was she almost wanted to see them. Bats weren't nearly as scary as she thought. Many people are afraid of bats because they don't know much about them. Some people worry that bats will get tangled in their hair, and that's unlikely. A bat can find a tiny bug can easily avoid flying into something as big as a person. At lunch the next day, Lewis took out some library books about bats. Molly set out her notes, too. Suddenly, a shadow fell across the table. Molly looked up. Then she poked Frank and Lewis. They looked up, too. It was Vampire Vivian. Hey, she said. I didn't know you guys were interested in bats, too. Vivian was smiling. Somehow she seemed less weird. Uh, Molly stammered. We're trying to find out why there are suddenly all these bats around my house. I can explain that, Vivian said. It's because of my bat house. Molly, Frank, and Lewis stared at her. You're what? Frank asked finally. My bat house, said Vivian. It's a little house my mom and I built to attract bats. You mean you invited bats to come live near you? asked Lewis. On purpose? Vivian laughed. Why don't you come over after school and I'll show you? Molly nodded slowly. So you so did Frank and Lewis. This is just too weird to pass up. There are fewer and fewer bats in the world. One reason is that bat habitats are being destroyed. Bat houses give bats a safe place to live. I still don't get why people would want bats to live near them, said Lewis on the way to Vivian's house. Because bats are so cool, Vivian said. Lewis rolled his eyes. I meant normal people, he muttered. Vivian laughed. Well, for one thing, bats help get rid of pests like mosquitoes. Some bats can eat 1,200 insects in one hour. Wow, said Molly. Vivian sure knew a lot about bats. Most bats are insect eaters, and some eat fruit, fish, frogs, mice, birds, and even other bats. A vampire bat eats blood. It's, it uses its teeth to make a small cut in an animal's skin. Then it licks up the blood from the cut. Vampire bats live only in Mexico and Central and South America. The bat house was attracted to the bat was a the bat house was attached to the back of Vivian's house. Are there bats in there right now? asked Frank. Vivian nodded. A colony of big brown bats moved in last week, she said. Vivian passed around the binoculars so everyone could see the bats better. They're hanging upside down. You can just see their furry little heads. There sure are a lot of them, said Frank. Molly tried to count them, but the bats were squished too close together. It was hard to tell where one bat ended and another began. I wish I could see a big brown bat up close, close up, she said. I have a great picture of one right here in my bat album, said Vivian. Many bats live in large groups called colonies. Some colonies have more than a million bats. Bats use their hind feet to hang upside down. They sleep that way and clean themselves that way too.
This is a great picture, Molly said. It makes me want to see some real live bats swooping around, said Louis. Me too, said Frank. Bat anatomy. Claw, thumb, first finger, forearm, ears, wing membrane, tail, feet, legs, fifth finger, fourth finger, third finger, second finger. Remember, never touch a bat. Like raccoons and other wild animals, bats may carry a dangerous disease called rabies. Just stay until sunset, Vivian said. That's when the bats fly out of their house to hunt for food. Vivian's mom thought that that was a great idea. Why don't you all stay for dinner, too, she said. Big brown bats can fly as fast as one as 15 miles an hour. How do bats change direction when they are flying? They move their long fingers and change the shape of their wings. After dinner, they all watched as the bats came streaming out into the night sky. Even Lewis had to admit that bats were pretty cool. A few days later, Vivian came to Molly's house for dinner. Vivian had been a really good sport about the whole vampire thing. I'm not worried about vampires anymore, Lisa told her. Not since I met this new boy. I'm pretty sure he's a werewolf. Vivian and Molly laughed. Forget bats and vampires. Little sisters are the weird ones.